Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back. Um, when you guys are getting ready to leave on a long duration, in, let's say three weeks or more, even two weeks, when you're running a fish room, you have to expect that whoever may be taken over for you is not aware of fish keeping. So I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks some things that you guys should be aware of, some things that you guys should be doing and not assume that whomever is coming to take that place, you want to have backup plans, redundancy and make it very clear to whomever is going to be taking your position uh, to be watching over all of your livestock and, and so forth and all of the tanks. Now if you only have a couple of tanks, it's, that's you know a whole different story, but as a lot of you are aware, um, who have like a fish room, multiple tanks. So I'm going to walk through some of my tanks throughout the fish room, some of my displays. I'm going to give you guys some tips and tricks, uh, some things to be aware of, some things that may help uh, whomever's going to be stepping into your spot for the next few weeks or however long you would be uh, gone um, away from uh, your fish room and tanks and so on and so forth. So let's just go ahead and get to it. This is one of my um, rack systems here. Uh, these four, as you guys have noticed in previous videos, these are my ancestress breeder tanks. So it has my dominant male and females in these four tanks across this rack. And these are all on a auto drip. So as far as maintenance goes, there is none. All they have to do is feed. And then you'll notice redundancy. tape, you know, specify the days, have your tanks labeled, you know, use painter's tape, it'll peel off your glass easy, so when you get back, if you don't want it on there anymore, you can get these markers, these are not the dry erase kind of marker, um, they're better than that, the ones I use are by Crayola, and they're window crayons, and they do wipe off with just a little bit of water in a rag and they'll stick on there better than like a dry erase marker would but you can use dry erase too but again redundancy make sure that you're consistent all around specify what you're feeding how much it needs to be fed you know like in this tank for instance specifies here you know where I want the water line so when they need to do a top off um, they can go ahead and do that. So on these particular tanks, they're not going to do an actual water change or a gravel vac. It's only strictly going to be top offs on those two top tanks. And again, labeling, labeling, redundancy. Keep <coughs> everything is specified on here using that um, window crayon. And it specifies on here exactly what I need topped off. Again, label more labeling labeling right on those tanks this is another rack system if you guys have seen in previous video this is my Neo Caradina um, grow out and breeder setups this entire rack system this is not on a continuous strip system the only thing that they need to do is feed and do top offs again redundancy for these I would highly recommend don't use uh, use uh, their fingers don't have them use you know measuring spoons cups so on and so forth I would literally take your food you can get these at your dollar store they're just tiny little ziploc bags and I put exactly how much needs to be fed including the date when these need to be fed because with your Neo Caradina shrimp you don't need to overfeed especially when you're going to be gone and you're not going to be doing any type of water changes and you're just going to expect somebody to do a top off so as far as swings in your water parameters you're reducing that potential of anything drastic happening or catastrophic. So I would highly recommend with any of your shrimp tanks, um, I specifically dated these and put exactly how much needs to go in there so all they have to do is open this up and dump them in the tank on that particular day. Simple as that. And you'll see I did that all along my shrimp tanks. Now for instance on this tank, this has got my Clarkie electric orange crayfish grow outs in here. 
Um, this is housing all males right now, and it also has an sister's placo in there as well as some cherry shrimp. You'll see on here, feed once daily, quarter teaspoon or 1.25 milliliter tetracolor granules. So all I gotta do is go over, I have it labeled, this is all the foods. So they'll see tetracolor granules, grab the quarter teaspoon, simple as that. Keep it clean, keep it organized. And again, redundancy. You'll see every one of my tanks is labeled the exact same way. This one's on an auto drip system as well, so as far as maintenance goes with that, there is none except feeding and, you know, it specifies on there what needs to be fed, when they need to be fed, and so on and so forth. And I'm still working on labeling. This isn't even done yet. This takes time. Label all of your pumps, all of your cords, and then have backups. So if anything goes out, you'll see I got an emergency basket here. So all I got to do is call me and I can walk them through it. Um, and then also, you know, that's why you label as well. So it's pretty self explanatory. So if they can't figure it out, obviously they're going to call you. And I got some medications in here just just in case. And I got some backup heaters. So again, redundancy. Make sure that you have extra cords, extension cords. And then label it, emergency basket. This is one of my go-to kits. So any connectors or anything like that, that's an emergency kit. Keep it out where they can see it. And also, I highly recommend in every single one of your fish rooms, you need to have a fire extinguisher. It's a must. I also utilize, and I mentioned this in previous videos, as I use a GFCI portable outlet. Ground fault circuit interrupter. It's not only going to protect yourself, but also your livestock. Everyone should have these. Um, I do also sell those on our website, so you guys can always take a look at it. And I run those for every one of my, uh, for the fish room, display tanks. It's a must, it's a must, it's a must. So keep things clean, keep your fish room clean, keep it easy. Keep it simple, stupid. That's a method I've lived by for years. And live by that method, and you guys will be just fine. And whoever is taking your spot for those days that you'll be away, why I don't use auto feeders? It takes away from identifying diseases, potential diseases within your fish room. I'm not going to say I haven't used auto feeders years back. I believe a lot of people do. I think in my opinion they're a waste of money and a waste of time because it makes us get lazy as fish keepers. Is You can easily overlook because you're expecting that thing to be operating on a consistent basis. And oftentimes if we get comfortable and complacent in a certain area, as an example, using an auto feeder. That's why I don't use them. Uh, friends of ours who will be taking over for the next few weeks watching over our home so on and so forth all of our pets fish room all the other tanks so they already had a run through and a quick training on what they need to do and I explained to them how I was going to go about doing it and labeling and they agreed and oftentimes you want to find out what is best for that individual okay a lot of people are more visual if you label the tanks, be redundant, be consistent, be fluent in each and every one of your setups and make it as simple, point blank, make it easy for them. That's going to reduce any stress and potential not only on them, the ones who are going to be caring for your pets, but also on your livestock as well um, and your plants and so forth. And then that way you can rest easy at night knowing you did everything in your power possible to prevent 
be proactive rather than reactive and I've explained this on live streams and other videos have a proactive approach when it comes to fish keeping simplicity and be proactive not reactive and that's my life's motto not only in fish keeping but life in general because too many people want to react to a situation rather than being proactive to prevent the potential of something occurring so that's why redundancy and consistency is what happens in every one of my tanks let's go ahead and take a look at the displays tanks outside the fish room um, I'll, I'll show you guys that and then um, this is Monday March the 13th hopefully I get this uploaded today so you guys can have a video remember I got some cool videos coming up in the next few weeks so bear with me I'm gonna try to get you guys out some content while we're away um, so do stay tuned to my channel make sure you hit that subscribe button hit that like button hit the share button and make sure you guys hit that notification bell so you can get these updates and I'll probably end up doing um, some live streams uh, while I'm out in a way as well so I really appreciate you guys um, so let's go ahead and take a look at those other tanks I'm gonna wrap this video up get back to it um, we're leaving early Wednesday this Wednesday morning uh, so we got still tons of work to do yet um, trying to get a family of six uh, out for that period of time as a lot of you are aware of who have family have kids so on and so forth it takes time so especially when you're dealing with multiple tanks so I'm glad I did reduce when I did because I even have more tanks than what I do now so um, yeah anyway it's all part of the joys of fish keeping you guys need to be patient and do your due diligence when it comes to this hobby okay so let's go ahead and take a look at some of these tanks as you guys know this is the uh, labidochromis grow out tank this has a um, bunch of fry in it and this is on an auto continuous drip system so as far as maintenance very minimal all they have to do is feed you'll see on here again labeling and then that's the African cichlid tank um, same thing labeling uh, South Central American cichlid tank and then this is my breeder tank for my Clarky Crayfish, which I'll do a video on later at some point. And then this is a quarantine tank, which has two electric blue Acara in there. So again, every one of these is labeled. Make sure you guys, what I do here, you'll see new life spectrum half a teaspoon 2.5 milliliters once daily and all they have to do is reference knowing exactly what it is new life spectrum again I'm not being sponsored paid for by in any way with any of these foods I'm just showing you guys what foods I use um, this is my own mix here this is cichlid formula and again specified on tank cichlid formula three quarter teaspoon once daily and again the African cichlid tank, that tank, are both on um, auto continuous drip systems. Same thing with this tank. Specifies what they need to do. They can go here, see the food. Check things once, twice, 50 times if you need to because you guys would beat yourself up if you didn't do everything that you could to prevent. So check all your connections, make sure all your pumps are going. Like I already showed you guys in the emergency kit, you should always have backup heaters, backup pumps. Especially when you're running the fish room, things are going to happen. Um, and you want, you don't want to have to expect whoever is staying in your home taking your position they have to go to the store and buy something because that's not their responsibility plus half the time they're not even going to know what they're even looking for or you trying to explain to them over the phone 
it's only going to make matters more difficult. So as always you guys, do stay tuned, got some cool things coming up in the next few weeks. I will get you guys some awesome video. Like I said, make sure you guys hit that notification bell. Subscribe to the channel if you like this content. I want to thank you guys very much. As always, stay encouraged. Keep on keeping on. Happy fishing. Until next one, we'll talk to you.